Hey guys, a uh, long time no see. I've um, been kind of busy. Uh, all my free time has been going to modify knives that are coming in, so I, I do appreciate that. But I did have some time to make a video about a knife I've kind of been waiting for. So, y'all probably know what it is. The uh, Riot Jack 2.0. They kind of went with the uh, inter interchangeable blade on this time. With a titanium spine. I got some screws taken out right now. Interesting pivot design. We'll see in the video if we'll probably take it down or not. Of course, it's the same thing. Integral, similar design to the, the first jack. Marble carbon fiber uh, scales. So let's bust out the jack 1.0 right away. You get a little comparison. Now you can see the jack 1.0 is a little bit longer, but not by much, maybe a quarter inch if that. Uh, you're, that's all in the blade mainly. If you line up heel to heel, you got about a quarter inch more blade on the jack 1.0. On the spines, you can see we're pretty similar uh, on length, but of course the jack, I wish I could show, I gotta show you the side view, I suppose. Once I mess up my napkin right here. I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but the width from bottom to top, it's a lot thicker on the jack, 1.0. And you actually, that's what you get its heft from. It's pretty heavy, I think it's at about seven ounces. And this feels that it's about six ounces, so it's about an ounce and a half lighter than the Jack uh, 1.0. So let's just look at the Jack uh, itself now. Of course, it's going to have the Riot quality, nice uh, machining. I always do like this texture you get in the back. It's right on the palm of your hand when you're gripping it, so you do get a really good grip on it. You do have a little indentation here for your thumb. And of course for your finger so it actually does grip very nicely of course you got the finger troll to choke up a little bit so overall very nice on that so it does have the um the hardened steel uh lock insert on the blade so of course riyadh's pretty much known for doing that on all their knives i haven't i don't think i've seen one without one on it of course the biggest thing i think that's kind of the um what people really throw people off is this center pivot. It's a huge circle, maybe about 20, 28 millimeter, 27 millimeter. Just a titanium disc with a bunch of screws in it. Uh, is it pretty? No, it's. I don't think it's pretty, but I don't think it's ugly either. I think they could have done something better, maybe something that flows design-wise better instead of just uh, making it look like, I don't know, a revolver barrel or something like that. But uh, I'm going to take it apart and see why they designed it like that or if there was a reason to. So yeah, I'm going to start taking it apart. Um, I do got two screws taken off for the blade. That's going to be the first thing I'm going to take out. Uh, one key thing is that there are different size screws. Uh, it starts at the back, long, medium, and then short at the front. So I haven't taken it off yet. I just took two screws out. So let's take this out and see how this fits. So yeah, pretty nice. So you got these oval pockets on the spine. Uh, these little nubs are oval shaped. So it does fit right in there good. One thing I did notice, if you see where the blade meets your spine, it's pretty flush on this side. On the other side, there's like a, a 0.3 millimeter step up. And it's not, you know, you can't move it over. That's just how it is. So either the blade is a little off, which honestly, looking at it, it is the blade. So I could zoom in right here. You could probably see there's more meat here and there's less meat on this side. So the blade was ground or a little offset when they did this. So that explains that. Now there are gonna make uh, diamond steel version inserts uh, I think sometime middle of this year. I would like to see a drop point or something. Uh, there is room in the frame. 
if you see how this sits in the frame, there is room to do a drop point instead of just a, a warning. But yeah, so that'd be interesting to see how they do with that. Now the actual spine, it looks well machined. It's a solid piece of titanium, this whole thing in here to out to here. One, so that's a big chunk of titanium they cut this out of. And I gotta say, it looks really good, the machining on it. Of course, they did their uh, their flame anodizing on here. All right, so let's put these blade screws aside. Let's start taking apart the rest of the knife. So T8 hardware, it looks like T8 hardware everywhere, which is, I appreciate that or larger let's take off this scale i think these might be t6 no or t8 they're just really small so one thing about this that's interesting on the lock side the screws on the outside but on your uh, show side the screws are hidden i don't know if you can see them or not in here the screws are actually hidden in here, and they actually have access points to get these screws out. So we're going to take these off. Three T8s. I want to see if they got brass inserts or something on the back of the uh, your uh, your scale here. So hopefully this is a little easier to put together than the Jack 1.0. If you worked on that, you know the washers putting the washers inside where the bearings are at are kind of a pain in the butt. You have to use some grease or something to hold it. So here this comes off. So yeah, that's what they did. Looks like the epoxied in. I don't know if those are steel. Let me see. Yeah, so that's good. They epoxied in some steel uh, threads into here. I guess they milled it oval so there's room for the epoxy to grab more, I suppose. So that's good. So you don't have to worry about this uh, stripping out. That's going to be pretty strong. If it does rip off uh, some super glue, <laughs> it'll fix it right back up. And this is what I'm happy to see. They didn't do any lightning on the Jack 1.0. It's solid underneath, underneath here. There's no holes, no pockets, no nothing. That's why it's kind of heavy here. They decided to line it up, which is nice. Same thing on both sides, some lightning pockets. So that's really nice to see. It's kind of crazy, this thing's just getting lighter, it's kind of like still big. There's action without the blade. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see. I guess I'm gonna start on the uh, face side pivot. Let's put these little screws aside, we'll get nothing mixed up. See how this comes apart. Pretty short screws, maybe five millimeter long. T8 titanium. So these are all titanium right here. So it is a, it is end up going to be a, a lot of hardware. That's for sure. So I haven't been able to tell how it's put together really from a couple pictures I've seen. Apparently there's a piece of M390 in the middle of this pivot. So we'll find out. And these discs, I guess it was just a design element because I see no reason why you actually want a disc. I think it was just for their design element. Of course it's not a captured pivot, but I think it's still loosening though. No, okay. So bust out the other T8. Get in there. Okay, it's coming from the other side. All right, I'm gonna start from the other side here. This is, I'm assuming this is just the screw and not the actual pivot. Yeah, okay. So it starts from your lock side. It's a very thick screw. We're going to start taking these off then. We got to take them off anyways. T8. Tons of screws. I got to anodize all these screws. That's why this knife's in. 
It's coming in for just a couple mods. Customize it, personalize it. We're gonna do all these screws. He wanted a, a purple. So we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna clean them up, ultrasonic clean them and do it a 19 volt purple, which should look pretty nice. taking forever right it's a lot of little screws ain't it all right finally so now we should be able to see what the deal is with this thing is let me see if this thing just comes off there it goes okay there we go so that's interesting how they do it so it looks like you drop it all together so you drop your bearing you drop your washers and then this is your cap which one thing you have to line up, you notice this notch right here. That notch goes where your lock bar goes up against that. So you gotta make sure you line up that notch. I don't think there's actually a key. You probably just have to remember that. So cool. Let's see if this pops out. All right, so I'm just gonna push it out through the other side. It should just come out the other side. Let me disengage the lock. There it goes. All right. So there's the other side, all in one piece. That's pretty cool. And then the bearing should pop out on the other side. There it is. Should pop out. All right, I gotta pry it out. There it goes. And then this slides out. Here's the piece I was talking about. There's more screws on this. Let me clean this up real quick. Get a blue rag for all this grease. So here we go. We got... This is the part I couldn't really tell, but now I could see, obviously, how they got it in hand. Your M, it's a piece of M390 for your actual center of your pivot. What does it house, really? I guess it houses your bearing surfaces. So your bearing's running against M390. Of course, you're, uh, it's going to have your lockup, and it's going to have your detent track to the detent hole. So I guess that's one way around putting this titanium piece on here. Um, I think those are T6. So yeah, pretty interesting how they did that. This is a lot of machining, by the way. So you have your... Uh, I guess the best way to assemble is to make your one cap, install washer bearing, line up your pivot, insert this, that you could just rotate that to line it up, you have to line it up right off the bat. Install bearing, install washer, install your cap in the right orientation, and bam. So this is actually easier to work on than the Jack 1.0, as far as not fiddling with the washers and them sticking them on the inside with some grease or something. So not that bad. I was thinking maintenance was going to be more work. Besides all the screws, it's, it's not that bad. So we'll take this apart again. There we go. Pretty simple, and that's it. That's pretty much a full takedown. Um, I have, probably will take this apart just to see how this looks. I might anodize these just because I'm already here. Might as well. T6. Okay, these got a little bit of thread lock. Surprisingly, not a lot. I think they're just tightened. I think there's no thread lock on these little bolts. Put a little bit of force. Torque it a little till it breaks. I always found that's better if you got some tougher screws. Instead of just putting direct force, give a little torque. Should break it off. And this should just pop out. Or is it pressed in there? Yeah, if that's pressed in there, I'm not going to want to mess with it. 
I don't have to take it out. I just kind of want to see it. But yeah, it looks like there might be a little interference fit, which is good because you really don't want any slop on your blade to your pivot. So yeah, I'm not going to try to take that out. But yeah, that's it. So yeah, pretty nice. A lot of screws for sure, but um, I think it is. Uh, I probably could put it together as quick as I can, the Jack 1.0, if not a little bit faster. But yeah, that's it. A little quick overview breakdown. Thanks for watching, guys.